Hi, welcome back to Open Hand Farm. I'm Penny and today we are in my workroom. I have this bench that, I guess it's a bench, a stool, whatever, and it's got some issues. I don't ever want anybody sitting on it because there's some definite cracks in the wood. So what I do is I just set it next to a chair and I put a tray on top of it so they can be used as a table. What I'm gonna do today is take this top off and I'm going to use some old boards that I have and cut them to size and lay them across the top. And I'm just doing random sizes. I'm not doing the same size board all the way across. So let me give you an idea here. It'll just kind of have a wooden top like this. After I get the boards cut to size and get them sanded down, I will be painting the whole bench. So the woods will not matter if they're different colors. So first of all, I need to take the top off of this bench. Got us some old flathead screws in here. Wow, they're not even hardly screwed in there. So this is the frame, and this definitely had its issues. Now I'm able to lay the wood up here and get a better idea of what I'll be working with. Now I need to measure the boards and what I'm going to do is start with my shortest board and see how it will set with having an overhang. I think I'm going to like the amount that it overhangs. So that's going to be my measurement for the other boards. So let me go get those cut and get everything sanded and we'll be back. So I have the boards cut and sanded and they are a little uneven because especially this board, this two inch board is a little bit shorter than the other boards. So what I did is I went in and sanded the edge of the bigger board next to it so that it would blend together better. You can see in the picture the difference. So now what I want to do is take the boards off and I think I want to individually paint the boards. So that's what I'm going to do first and I will paint the frame by itself also. So let's get to painting. The paint I'm using is just a basic black flat paint. I really I'm working on cardboard and I like to slide the boards after I paint them because if there's any paint that builds up under the edges that will loosen it up so that it doesn't stick to the cardboard. Otherwise when you pull your board off you'll take some cardboard with it and it'll be a mess. You might even have to sand it down and start over again. You don't want to forget the underneath side of things because at some point somebody is going to see it. And if that doesn't bother you, fine, but I like it to look as well done as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole underneath side. Okay. 
Now as you're doing the underneath side, sometimes what happens is you'll get some paint dripping from the edge you're painting on. So you just want to kind of make sure that there's no drip marks kind of clean it up as you go. Otherwise, those will dry and you'll have to sand them off and work on that side again. I'm going to let this dry and then come back and do a second coat. In the meantime, I'm going to put my paint brushes in a plastic bag and wrap them up really tightly so that I can use them again and they won't dry out while I'm waiting for the table to dry. Okay, I got the base painted, I got the boards painted, and now I have laid them out the way I want them to be. I have my boards overlapping my base. So I took a ruler and measured how far from the base the boards came out. And then I checked the other side and made sure that they were even. Then I did the same thing on the side. Perfect. Because I want to make a line of where I can place my nails or brads, I want to measure in two and three fourths inches because that's the middle of the leg. Then I'm gonna stretch a piece of tape that goes all the way across there and match up those two pieces. And I know that I need to put my staples or brads on this side of the tape and I've already done the other side so it's ready to go too. I decided the easiest way to connect this is to use my brad gun. It is an air gun. Now remember I'm going to stay on this side of the blue. So I'm just going to put Hmm, they're not wanting to go in. Okay, for some reason, they didn't want to go down in there. I don't know if my base is too hard or what, I'm gonna get a hammer and try to pound these in. Now these are a pretty soft material. So I don't know, no, they're bending on me. So I think instead I'm going to cut the tops off. They are connected. Well, that side didn't get one in it, but they're just sticking out and I don't know why. This just shows you that not everything goes perfectly, even if we're trying to video it. So I'm just cutting those tops off. They're still sticking up a little bit, so I'll have to pound that part in. All right, now, Flatten that in, flatten that, that. Okay, then I need another one over here. So let's see if we can get it to go in and stay.
That one went in nicely. Okay. That looks pretty good. The first thing I'm going to do is sand the edges to expose bare wood because I like that style. Then I'm going to take this folk art home decor wax. I'm just going to use it as kind of like a stain. I'm going to go over the whole project and it will just give that black paint a richer look as well as stain any bare wood that I have exposed by sanding to a nice dark brown color. Then I will add a coat of Verithane finishing wax on top of it. And this just gives it a nice smooth finish and a very sturdy top coat so that I can use it and not worry about it getting banged up. I'm going to use a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to fold it over and go over the edges of everything nicely. This is actually watered down some already. So you saw how watery that was. But I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. So this is what it kind of looks like. It's very wet. And I'm gonna start with the legs and you're just gonna put it on there liberally. Let it cover everything. I think that's good. Now we're going to let this dry and then we'll come back with our finishing wax. I'm really liking this. I'm really excited. Let me show you again. I'm using this Verithane finishing wax. It's kind of clear. You just brush it on and wipe it off. It leaves a great seal of protection but it also leaves a soft silky touch i really like it i use it on most of the items that i do a trash to treasure with you can use a brush like i am or you can use a rag you just want to wipe the extra off it does dry clear though, if it's kind of white and thick in places. Of course, you want it as smooth as you can. I will probably let this top dry and then do another coat just so that it has a little bit more protection in case somebody sits a drink on it or something. I have actually used this on outside furniture that has had snow sit on it and sunshine shine on it and it's actually doing quite well. I think we're done. I will let this dry, put another coat on it and who will see how it looks. <laughs>